Good evening Europe, this is Croatia calling and my name is Dean Vuletic. I'm the author of Postwar Europe and the Eurovision Song Contest, the first ever scholarly study of the history of the Eurovision Song Contest and how it has been intertwined with postwar European politics. The book is the result of a project funded by the Marie Skłodowska Curie Actions of the European Commission. Now, Croatia is an apt place to reflect on the significance of the Eurovision Song Contest for European integration, as Croatia currently holds the presidency of the European Union and the Rijeka is a European capital of culture. But it's also exactly 30 years since the Eurovision Song Contest was staged for the first and only time in Croatia, in Zagreb, and on May 5th, the Council of Europe's Europe Day to boot. Since its establishment in 1956, the Eurovision Song Contest has been a symbol of post-war European integration. It's one of the greatest popular cultural events uniting Europeans. Hundreds of millions of viewers have been tuning in annually to watch the show. As I uncover in my book, the Eurovision Song Contest also played a role in pioneering another symbol of European integration, the Circle of Twelve Golden Stars. In 1954, the European Broadcasting Union, the organizer of the Eurovision Song Contest, decided to adopt a version of this as the logo for its newly established Eurovision network. That was set up for cooperation and exchange in radio and television programming among Europe's national public service broadcasters. And it's where the Eurovision Song Contest gets its name from. The Eurovision logo was inspired by discussions in the Council of Europe on whether that organization should adopt the Circle of Twelve Golden Stars on a blue background as the design for the flag of Europe. The Council of Europe ultimately did approve that in 1955. The Circle of Twelve Stars, together with the classic Te Deum jingle, introduced each edition of the Eurovision Song Contest until the early 1990s. In the mid-1980s, the European Community, the predecessor of the European Union, decided that it needed to do more to promote a common European identity among the citizens of its member states. So one of the things that that organisation did was to take the flag of Europe that had been adopted by the Council of Europe as the European Community's flag. This is now, of course, the flag of the European Union as well. But the European community also took inspiration from the Eurovision Song Contest's great success in promoting cultural connections among Europeans. So much so that in the late 1980s, the European community began to sponsor short films that were shown in the contest and which promoted the community's policies. For example, the 1990 contest in Croatia, which was then still a part of Yugoslavia, promoted that year as the European community's European Year of Tourism. In no other edition of the contest have there been so many songs which mentioned Europe in their lyrics. That was due to the fact that the Cold War had just ended. The winner of the 1990 Eurovision Song Contest was Italy's Toto Cutugno, the man you see here on stage. He sang in Sieme 1992, or Together 1992, which was an ode to the European single market that was about to be adopted. That's the only song about European integration that has ever won the Eurovision Song Contest. All of this, together with its staging on Europe Day, makes the Zagreb edition the most Europeanist Eurovision Song Contest ever. The Eurovision Song Contest is one of the world's longest running and most popular television shows. But, for the first time in its history, it will not be staged in its annual slot this year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Still, you can watch past editions of the contest online, including of the Zagreb edition. And you can contact me via my website, www.deanvuletic.com, if you have any questions about the history and politics of the Eurovision Song Contest.